Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanaliza Dawn, the January 2 tournament. We're going to be starting out with Kshatra and Block Duchy, but first off, she could go over the tournament format a bit. So, this is going to be a round robin tournament, seven round round robin, which will likely turn into a four person bracket, I'm guessing, because usually what happens. But starting out, Black Dutch and Kshatra will be going up against each other, and of course, be, there's loads of others because. This is a 2v2 tournament, and this is a lot of... Oh, sorry. Black Judge and Kshatra against Saniac and Topkak. That is the first round match. So yeah, there's seven teams, and it's a round robin, so there's not a whole lot of matches going on. But start with that one. So where... Once I get that area. There we go. Yeah, that is going to be on Lonely Oasis. Which is, you know, it's... I like that map quite a bit, actually. Lonely Oasis is one of those maps that you see in 1v1, and it's kind of tricky because it doesn't really support vehicles very well, but it's also very large and wide, and I feel like in 2v2, that's going to be far more effective for actually letting the match play out rather than having it be always just this one Amphib versus Cloaky down the center thing. With the occasional side hops, but 2v2 will be very interesting on this map, because probably we'll see someone either go for the sea and try to go for the outside with ships, or go in with gunships or something and then try to grow around the back. So, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here. Just gotta wait at this point for Black Duchy, since they are deciding now is the best time to take a bio break. I personally disagree, but that is apparently their prerogative. So once they get that sorted out, then we will have the game going, and they got that sorted out. So let's get this game going. Of course, you have to wait until... Yeah, there's technical things to wait for. But yeah, so 2v2, we haven't really seen a whole lot of 2v2 recently, mostly because I don't tend to cast a lot of 2v2, so really it's more on me. But yeah, we have... We have a 2v2 tournament, which is in high demand. People generally like seeing this game played with teams, and I've got to be honest, it does work quite well. It does scale well to at least 3v3, 4v4, just due to the nature of 0k as a game. So, when you're playing 1v1, you have a lot of options and a lot of things you can spread out to, but because of how little space a single player takes up, you can get team very easily. And that's, that's why we see a lot of team demand. The question, of course, is how are we going to see this work in 2v2? And usually what we're going to see is effectively what would happen in 1v1 at the 5 minute mark being the case right at the start. The economy is considerably stronger right off the bat because you basically have 10 metal per second right off the bat. And you have two factories going as well. And of course two commanders, potentially one of them can go forward. And since you have two factory plops, you can have two factory strategies going on at once. Which does mean that once you get into larger team games, it gets a little bit chaotic, but 2v2, 3v3, that usually works really well. So what I would expect is that in the 2v2 match here, we are going to be seeing, like I said, one person likely going for Cloakie or Amphib, another person either going for Ships or Air. Now, that's mainly Lonely Oasis. Airplay was very popular in 0k for a while, but it has fallen out of favor. It fell, fell out of favor about a year ago. I'm curious if it's going to come back, if it's going to be a map-dependent thing, if we're going to ever see it again, and quite frankly, I'm fine with the idea that you have double land. That double land is actually a viable option. Because having the air, having like land and air can be a little bit generic. But that is, of course, a question of what Top Cac, Saniac, Black Dutch, and Shatcher are going to do in this match. Because once we get into the match, obviously they have to pick. So right now, it's just a question of like, what are they planning, which we will see during the game as well. So for those of you who haven't seen a lot of 2v2 matches, generally it stops at with the with the players communicating what they're going to do, trying to plan it out during the pregame phase, and then from there going off to obviously playing the game. So I want to see what's going to happen with that, because that is that is going to be the real question. Also, to be honest, I haven't seen... I've seen Topcat play recently. I think I've seen Saniac play recently in 1v1. I haven't seen a lot of them in 2v2. So I'm curious how this is going to go. Hmm. Of 
course, when the players actually get ready. And then from there, we'll have the actual match because this is... This is round one. Okay, there we go. Everyone's ready. Let's get this started, finally. This is... Sorry about that. It's just getting on my nerves a bit when it's like, come on, we've got a game. Waiting for you guys here. I'm running out of patter. <laughs> okay, now we've got something going. No, wait. Yeah, Black Duchy and Kshatra starting at the north side of the map. Well, Top Gak Saniac are going to be starting at the south side of the map. And Top Gak and Saniac are... Okay, they're... Okay, sorry, Kshatra is going for jump bots really off the bat. And Top Gak going way off the side. Not going anywhere near the center. So their opponents are going to have a bit of a wider range... A bit of a wider reach potentially to hit them. But all at the same time... They could be hit wide as well, and it looks like that may very well be what happens here, too. Yeah, Kshatra actually proposing to do the exact same thing, having them split and basically relying on getting up quickly economically rather than trying to worry about whether or not they're able to get a very solid defensive line on the back line, which is a valid strategy and quite strong if it works. So it sounds like Black Duchy and... Okay, so Saniac and Topcat can be going for a gunship cloaky setup. While it looks like Kshatra and Black Duchy are going instead for a jump bot cloaky setup from the looks of it. Yeah, at this point it's clear that Saniac and Top Guy going for a very forward play, which, like I said, makes a lot of sense. That is the way that you typically see anything played if possible. Like, go forward. If there's backline mexes, take those. But if Saniac's going for for the gunships, that can actually make it very difficult, because if Saniac goes for gunships, this area here is going to be much harder to defend, as we're going to see a bunch of locusts coming around the back, taking those out. Rather than where it would be with the ground army, where Black Duchy is in a perfect position to defend, Black Duchy is going to have to send up some gremlins for anything, really. That's the thing. Like, you got to send up gremlins up there, we're going to have to have missile towers up here. Like It's just going to be a real problem if those locusts manage to come through, which they probably will, because Saniac, starting with the gunships, they will have the support coming in from Topcac. So defense is there, and the game is beginning. So again, Kshatra, Kshatra is going for the jump bots. Black Duchy going for Cloaky. Gunship for Saniac. Cloaky again for Topcac. And Topcac can be starting out fairly conservative. Going for very quick worker. While Saniac, on the other hand, going for a lot of harpies. Which is not quite what I expected, but makes a lot of sense if you're dealing with a larger army. Because harpies do have much more defensive potential, and are also able to one-shot glaives. Which means if your opponents are going Cloaky, which they likely are, because Cloaky is super popular, then you're going to be able to deal with them. No problem. On the other hand, Topgak should be able to at least defend a bit. If they can deal with this one Glaive here, they will have a bit of a chance to at least keep Saniac's strategy hidden. But of course, that's only as long as it takes for Kshatra to get in with Pyros towards the towards Saniac's base, so at this point, I think Saniac's gonna only have three or four rapiers before it gets spotted, and I say that right as a Conjurer comes in from Topcac, not really, oh, sorry, that's Topcac's Conjurer, Topcac's the same team, I'm, uh, my apologies, I'm a bit clearly out of it, we'll, we'll have this sorted out in no time. At this one, though, Topcac, Topcac helping build with their teammate, holy crap, although seriously, we are seeing Shatrit now realizing there isn't much going on in the back lines, that it's quite open to the north side and might be able to actually stop this Conjurer here. That's the more exciting thing. If this Conjurer gets stopped by the Pyro, then we are going to see a... Actually, it very much will be since it won't be cloaked. And the Pyro, will it be able to see it? It will, yes! Shatra does, in fact, spot the Pyro and will be able to get... Sorry, spot the Conjurer, will be able to get it. And that eliminates pretty much any ability for the top line to be built up. As well as the Harpies being re revealed far earlier than I'm sure Saniac would have liked to. Because at this point, it's no longer a surprise strategy. It's purely defense. It's going to be an effective defense that Pyro has no hope, but hey, it's been revealed. They're well aware. There's no surprise. We should be seeing gremlins sometime pretty soon. Yeah, there they are. Right off the bat, Black Duchy with emergency gremlins, knowing there's a possibility of locusts, a possibility of harpies. They know. That was extremely effective from Kshatra, that scouting run, as well as taking out the Conjurer. And that's going to slow down the Southwest team greatly. So the Southwest team completely destroyed, or completely revealed... 
And the Northeast team clearly being a little bit more cautious. While the same, while they do have the advantage of momentum based on destroying that conjurer, because their gunships are a threat, Black Duchy, they're looking to be much slower in how they expand. They don't want to go quite to the North Hill as fast as they possibly could. They are getting up there. It's just not going to be as fast because they do need to have that anti-air defense. And indeed they do, as the Harpies are coming in right on in the Northeast base. They won't have much success, but they will be able to get rid of a few Glaives at the very least. Still, though, the Gremlins are already in place. That scouting run did its job, allowing the Gremlin to exist and know what's happening. Even as the Blastwings come in to try to get rid of them, it's not going to deal any damage. Thanks again to that Gremlin, although the Gremlin is going down. Another Gremlin already in place, so the Blastwings, complete waste of money right now. Not much they're able to do to really help anything. While at the same time, the Harpies, I mean, they're expensive, they're being built up, it's possibly going to be able to do something if they find the right position, but at this point, there's no position to be found. The Glaives are going down, though, so if some value is found, the Harpies are finding what they need. But at the same time, this top hill, it's not being built up. Again, because the anti-air defenses are not strong enough. Of course, at this point, with the Harpies going down, or at least being pressured away, we could see that top area be built up quite quickly, and Northeast managed to pull ahead and meddle. Because at this point, despite the fact that Southwest did lose the top hill, they're going forward. They don't really care about that. They still have the economy they need from going forward as they are, as particularly Topcat is. And Kshatra, at the same time, is going for that similar play over to the north. But again, they need to have the anti-air defenses. They need to have something set up to deal with the Harpies as the Harpies fly around the map. And even then, like, despite the fact that the anti-air defenses are in place, the Harpies managed to get several metal extractors on the northeast side. So that this Razor is going to be handy, but at the same time, it's a question of how much can be built up in the meantime. And clearly, despite Zaniac being scattered out, they're managing to get loads of momentum off of this gunship play just for the lack of razors. And I get that there are a lot of a lot of things have to be built with money, but that's that's the thing though. You get rid of the, you can't get rid of the harpy easily, but you can't get rid of the commander of Topcac. So at the very least, the storage for Northwest has been reduced by half. The economy has been reduced a fair bit too. But at the same time, Northeast has lost so much in the way of metal extractors that it's just tough for them to hold on to this. The Harpy's finally going down. That'll be a decent amount of reclaim at the very least to help offset the losses that have happened. But that being said, it's just going to be extremely difficult to maintain that. Considering that the losses in question are basically just losses of... I mean, they're losses of all the metal extractors. The losses of entire economies, as opposed to loss of four metal, six energy, and a bit of storage. The calm reclaim is going to be taken by Topcac, unless something changes massively in the next couple minutes. Topcac's going to have that. Saniac is pretty much just able to keep building up as they are. They have the Harpies, they have more gunships coming up, they have another Assault Wave potentially coming in, and their opponents, they're low on metal. We see Kshatra building forward. We don't see a whole lot of Black Duchy rebuilding. Black Duchy is building up the top hill, but they don't have anything in the back here to rebuild these metal extractors that have been destroyed by the Harpies. Their commander's up front doing reclaim, which I do approve of. So, they have that. Putting a bit of pressure on that, but at the same time, they have no way of dealing with the Reavers. They have no Ronin up. They have, well, okay, one Ronin up now. But not enough to actually deal with it. So, at this point, Black Duchy is becoming a bit of a weak link. It's going to be difficult for them to actually maintain the position, just because they are going to be having the entire set of warriors, the glaives coming in. Pretty much Top Cac's entire army, which is overwhelming them right off the bat. And the commander's doing everything it can to try to help out, but the thing is, at this point, the Reaver has been completely untouched. The Ronin countered by Glaives, by and large, so there's not a whole lot that can be done there, and the top area has no defenses whatsoever. And that is pretty much the only solid economic base that the Northeast team has. I mean, granted, Kshatriya has been rebuilding, which is good, but Black Tachi does not have anywhere near the same rebuild speed or pace at all going on. So right now, it's just a matter of economy. Thankfully for them, it's not a huge matter of economy. A lot more of it is coming down to attrition, but even then, attrition is actually in Northeast's favor. They're managing to get rid of a lot of these harpies, which does do them great deals of good. The question, though, is more a matter of when they're getting rid of the harpies, not what cost. Like, yeah, the attrition is going in their favor, but they still don't have much in the way of solid economy. They have a fair bit of reclaim, which is good, but this one warrior has no opposition whatsoever. At the same time, though, we do see that Kshatriya is trying to put in a bit of pressure with that Pyro to the Southwest. Just make sure that nothing's for free for the Southwest team. But as it stands, Northeast is still gradually losing a lot of momentum as it is. Losing a lot of their economy. Black Dutch's entire base has been pretty thoroughly raided. At this point, though, they are managing to rebuild. But the question is, can they stop this? 
Can they stop this next assault? And the answer is maybe. It's unlikely, but at least the Glaives won't be able to deal just all the damage in the world. They do have some opposition. They have the Glaives. They have the defenders, or rather the pickets. And there are Ronin in place to stop the Reavers, so it's not necessarily going to be as one-sided as it was in the previous engagement. But at the same time, there isn't much to destroy. Black Duchy just now rebuilding, and still not a whole lot of defenses over to the top plateau. And at this point, despite all these efforts, the Glaive is coming in from Topkak, able to destroy basically everything. No opposition whatsoever. The Cloakybot Factory for Black Duchy is going to go down basically right now. There's nothing left. Kshatra is essentially carrying the team at this point. As Black Duchy, apart from these four metal extractors they have built up, they have nothing. They will be rebuilding. Their commander is still in play. They don't have a complete loss yet. But it's just the constant, unrelenting pressure coming in from Topkak. As well as Sania coming in with support harpies here and there. And the fact that they're staggered like this too just makes it even harder. At the very least, the gremlins were cloaked. The gremlins were untouched. And that will be death sentences for at least one of those harpies. Possibly both, actually. Yes, definitely both. Both harpies down. So at the very least, Black Duchy has loads of reclaim to work with. But the question is, how can they maintain themselves against this relentless pressure from Topcac? At this point, Topcac's rally pointed into their base. Or very near their base. Near enough, as makes no difference. Black Duchy's commander is doomed. Unless either... Shatra can distract the, their opponents or somehow come in and save the day. Black Duchy's commander is going to go down and with that I think pretty much all hope of Shatra and Black Duchy taking this game at all. First round looks like it's going to be going to the southwest team of Saniac and Topkak. Now, Saniac has also pulled in Shieldbot Factory just for extra little oomph just to help get rid of those pyros and overall help get rid of everything around. So at this point looks like southwest team's got it. Shatra their main base, better defended than their teammates, but still not quite well enough. And I think we are going to see a towel, and do we do? We have the towel thrown by the Northeast team. Southwest team, Topkak, Saniac, take the match. And that is going to be, well, it's going to be round one. This is a round robin after all, so it's not just, you know, one match and then it's one and done. Obviously, we are going to have more matches coming up shortly. So the next round, we're going to have a near catastrophe versus Kingside Power Stays, Splatchage and Kshatra against Cortex the Killer and Lynx, and 400 Google Frog versus Saniac and Topkak. So at this point, I'm going to look at a near catastrophe versus Kingstad and Pyrostasis, since, of course, that's all the different players. We haven't seen either of those teams. So that'll be up once we get that sorted. Once, clearly, those players have to finish their own match first. Actually, I'm curious what we are seeing in terms of matches as well, because right now... I believe there are other matches going on, and we established in the previous tournament that there is a bit of precedent in going into these other matches and seeing what's happening, because, hey, it can be fun. And we are actually, oh, actually, it's only been six minutes in for the Kingstead Power Stasis match, so let's go have a look at what's going on there. Yeah, Kingstad is a player I've seen a lot, but hasn't really played in a while. Power Stasis I've never seen. As for their opponents, well, Minaro, pretty well-known team player, but that's about it. That's like, again, Anonymies, I haven't seen them much either. But at this point, it looks like we are seeing Shield Amphib versus Cloaky Spider. Interesting mix coming out from these players. And it appears that mostly Pyro, or mostly Spider for the Hermits. More than anything else, especially get rid of the scalps. Actually, pretty effective strategy there. Full hermit push coming in from Pyrostasis, able to put a bit of pressure onto Minero. Well, anon well, looks like Kingstad and Kingstad and Minero are just having a bit of a one v one situation as well. So it's split off clearly into two one v ones rather than splitting off into a straight two v two fight. But hey, that still works. So at this point, Kingstad moving forward. Kingstad, are you playing like Rar? You're very nearly playing a RAR game here. Upgrading your commander and everything. That's, that is quite a, quite a push there. That is actually a massive commander push. When you consider the Racketeers coming in on the side of Monero, it's actually a little bit tricky. Like, if Kingstad gets their comm sniped, I mean, the thing is, that it's not too hard considering that we are seeing their shields hit a lot. The Obviously, the Racketeer hits, they deal extra damage to shields. So now the shield is done. Kingstad's commander is actually under qu great risk. Despite that, Kingstad does have a fair amount of support on infrastructure, but not enough. The Ronin doing what they can to help stop the outlaws. 
And that does at least give Kingstack's commander room to retreat, but it does stop the Bushman. Nero's base is still in good condition. At the same time, though, Anonymous is taking a lot of pressure coming in from Pyrostasis, and while the Grizzly will be able to come up soon enough, they have to deal with 15,000 health worth of Hermits, which, for one Grizzly, is not trivial. It's not nothing. I mean, each Hermit only has about 1,400 health each, so the Grizzly, when you consider the fire, the amount of damage it has in each shot, could theoretically kill an entire line of them if they're too closely put together. But it's a question of how quickly it's going to take to be built, and that's about five seconds. Or possibly... Ooh, this is actually tricky. It's, it's going to be damaged off the bat, and the Hermits definitely have the positional advantage, but the question is, does it have enough HP? Oh! Well, it doesn't have enough defenses, that's for sure. The Commander going down, the Grizzly able to get a few hits in, but again, the Grizzly has such a high reload time, it might only get one la more laser off, manages to kill a Hermit. But that's not enough. So at this point, we see that Anonymes, they've lost their factory. Full spider push and fire stasis. Pure Hermit has done the trick. While at the same time, King Tad able to push in onto Monero, finish them off despite the racketeer pressure, despite the defenses they had set up. It wasn't quite enough. And clearly, Southwest, I mean, they have the economic game as it is, but that early push coming in from Pyrostasis just to take the Southwest sector, the Western section here, made sure that they had this. And then King's Tad. Commander push was risky, but there weren't enough racketeers to stop it. So there you go. So at this point now, I believe we can move on to round two. Or... Oh, interesting. That was actually a match that was not in the original bracket. So I'm going to have to deal with that. Apparently the brackets got changed a bit. Interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to have a slightly... Larger bracket, apparently. Mm -hmm. My apologies for the slight... Well, the silence, I suppose, really. It's... Just I need to adjust a bunch of things, because apparently now we actually have a lot going on with the way the brackets are set up. I did not realize there were some teams that were not added in yet, so there you go. Oh, it's just Black Dutch and Shatra were added in. That makes sense. So at this point, with, though, with them added, we should see... We should see, actually, a... Okay, she should be fairly good set it then. So yeah, Black Touching Shatra... Sorry, we were not it was... It was Kingstown Power Stasis, I believe, they were added. So yeah, Kingstown Power Stasis taking their match. We saw Black Touching Shatra lose theirs. So Saniac and Topcat getting a win. And the rest of the matches appear to be ongoing. But I'm not sure. The thing is, again, this is round robin, so unlike Swiss, we aren't going to see matches become more even as time goes on. Everyone is going to fight everyone. Or just about... No, we are... It is... Okay, this is strange. It's seven round... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, seven round with eight teams. That sort of makes sense. Anyway, at this point, it looks like we're going to have... Yeah, Critters the Killer and Lynx, their match is done. And it looks like the Mordor Poker Drill 400... Round, round 1, Group 1 is also done. So, Round 1 apparently has finished. So, at this point now, I actually kind of want to see how... Well, but we saw Poker Drill before. That was a little bit one-sided. I'm curious how they are in a team situation. But... I feel like that's not going to go well. I, however... Do want to see a near catastrophe versus Kingstad and Pyrostasis. That's the one that looks like it'll be interesting. And that will be on Contested Canyon. But at this point, we're just going to take a short break while waiting for the next match to start. So stay tuned. We'll be back as soon as that comes up. <laughs> 